City planning in general touches so many different subjects, transportation, economic development, housing. A lot of the things that affect our daily lives are made up of hundreds or thousands of small decisions that are happening at local levels. And they are often made by city planners. Kids don't grow up wanting to be city planners. I didn't actually think about city planning until I was almost done with college. My grandfather was the first African-American Board of Realtors president in California. And my dad was the second during the times when black people were not allowed to even know where homes were available to purchase. My grandfather said a lot about either you're in the government and you were trying to shape the powers within, or you can work outside, but all of us need to play this role of making our communities better. Warren and I get to work together on a lot of different things. Slow streets and flex streets, the Second Bay Crossing or Link 21, thinking about what could be the most transformational thing for Oakland in a way that supports equity and investment in our communities. What I really respect about Warren, he's not just there to be a face, he's there to find solutions. Why I find my work so meaningful is that I'm able to challenge who gets to make the kinds of decisions that affect our daily lives. The fact that Someone who looks and sounds and acts like me is part of that conversation is, I think, quite revolutionary. I want to find ways to elevate folks who are not usually a part of that conversation or have even been excluded from that conversation or traumatized by those types of conversations and their outcomes. The lanes on your street, the structure of your sidewalks, the quality of your pavement, all of that is local decisions. When you are in traffic, when you can't find affordable rent, if you can't find a house to buy, all of that was local decisions. That's the part that I find so meaningful about my work is that I can tell people that problem that you think is so abstract and so far out and we just don't know how to handle it. That's actually someone in this building made that decision. So let's go find them, let's talk about it. We can dream bigger. We deserve better services, different services, more innovative services. Government can provide a playground and a canvas for people to be creative. We just extended the program, so instead of the parklets and the street closures and the cafe seating ending in July, we extended it through March of next year. And the plan between now and then is to basically encourage and even support business owners in Oakland building up their parklets to be like the right spec. The moment Warren started working in the city, like the narrative changed and it's shown not just myself, but other merchants that you actually can have a working relationship with the city that's not antagonistic, where you feel seen, you feel heard. We issued 300 permits in a matter of months, and we had four permits for the last 10 years for parklets. Some of the folks that were telling me just a little over a year ago, how dare you take away my parking spot, I don't want to see any of this happen, are asking for those programs to be made permanent. When environmentalists and even transportation planners think about green space, we think of parks, we think of trees and plants. Green space also looks like a bike lane. If you're stuck in traffic, the answer is not to widen the freeway, it's to understand why is it that so many people live so far away from their jobs that they can't walk, bike, or take transit. Many folks will ask me, what's the best transportation policy you can think of to affect meaningful climate change, advance racial equity, et cetera, and like build affordable housing, their jobs. Advancing racial equity and addressing climate change and, and thinking about how we increase resilience are all the same tracks. When you think about the communities that don't have access to resources, it's the same groups that have been disproportionately affected by systemic racism, climate change, sea level rise, smoke inhalation. Instead of looking at those as abstract challenges that we have no control over and that we have to think of grand solutions that are 20, 30, 40 years down the pike, there are meaningful changes we can make Today, we really do have an untapped power when we all agree on shared objectives. But I think we lack imagination. We artificially limit what we believe is possible, and we start sentences with, we've never done that before. We have a rule against that. And I say, well, let's be the first to do it. Or who made that rule? Was it us? It's our rule? Can we change it? By challenging both the city administrator's office, the mayor's office, and your council to really push for these innovative solutions, you also can be that hero. Together, we're making these small decisions and advocacies that ideally push towards the shared future.